you can't burn the flame. He said that over 10 years ago. The living testament to, testament to his own manifestation. I'm too hot, you can't. And the flame is still burning. Citizens, let me tell you, man. I love this individual. Mm. I really do love this we man. We got history, we bro. Got his, we got <laughs> some damn we history, bro. About international. International history. I always New loved New York it. City New history. York City. We done partied. And yes, sir. We done partied and forgot we partied, Heather, on purpose. <laughs> Party some and of bullshit. the spaces we've been in, we can't tell all the stories. Yeah, yeah. But he has worked with some of the greatest, and um, his legacy is cemented. <laughs> In the Hall of Fame, whether it's Usher, Fabulous, Mary J. Blige, P. Diddy, he's done it all, man. Get us man, Cool J. Kid Cudi, he's done it all, man. Get us man a big round of a Britney Spears, Beyonce, Chris Brown, he's mm. done it all, man. Mm. Get us man a big round of mm. applause, singer, songwriter, producer, and now wealth manager. <laughs> Give it up for Ryan Leslie. Appreciate y'all. Hey, Appreciate y'all. Ryan, I just wanted to see you, man. Yeah. yeah. It's been a minute. It's been a minute, it's man. Been a minute. But it, it's I've always found I always find you fascinating because you always have been on the cusp of uh, progression uh, when it came to music, even the way you produce your music, the reason why we could play these songs that mm -hmm. were made in the past and they resonate today, it's because you make timeless music. So congratulations to you for that. Appreciate but it. you also um, have really, you know, You've been very forthcoming and generous uh, with your intelligence and your and, and, and the academics you've learned over the years. And you've always, whether through technology and now finances, have always shared your vision on how we could uplift and come up as a people and as a community. A lot of folks don't realize when you work in the music business, it seems like it's always good because anytime people see you, it looks good. Right. <laughs> whether it's on a music video, a talk show, a a podcast. Or uh, just your wardrobe as well. Yeah. All of the chains, the latest yeah. bag, yeah. fresh cuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's Always. never that way. It's never that way. And, 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 and when you work in a music or entertainment business, it might, it might be baffling that you could be a celebrity and be broke. Mm. Mm. Right? People can know you all over the world. You know, and you would think there's some value in that, but your bank account is skinny. Mm. It's happened to me. Heather, has it happened to you? Oh, of course. I've always told the citizens about what it's like signing on to those first production deals and, and trying to figure out, you know, when things start to slow down, what's your next move? And then mm -hmm. you start diving into your deal, which is why we hear so many artists today talking about getting their masters back and trying to get their publishing. Thank God for publishing and uh -huh. I I never lost my publishing, but otherwise it's a tough game to navigate through. It's a tough mm -hmm. game to navigate. Having that name and face recognition and not having money to to sort of support that. Mm -hmm. Ryan, what is your story? You got a new wealth plan you've been telling telling people about. Mm -hmm. But how did it come to be? Listen, I I agree with everything that y'all yes. have been talking about and uh it is really I think important Mostly because it's so spot on what you said. People see you in front of the cameras. People assume that you're living a life that they dream of living. Mm -hmm. And uh, even those that actually get their deals, et cetera, they just assume that, oh, this is just going to be like this forever. And I think a lot of it comes down to just youthful. You have a, a youthful sort of optimism, mm -hmm. like when you first mm -hmm. get on. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so important to actually have a plan so that once you make the money, you know how to make the money work for you. So yes. you work for the money, and then you know how to make the money work for you. And so luckily for me, uh, even just in my early days at school, I had great mentors, uh, one in particular, uh, that was like a legend on campus because uh, he had basically taken his student loans, flipped them, and then once he paid off the student loans, he had money that he could actually use to invest. And we're talking about 10, 20 exited. And I, I, I mm. actually went to that person and said, look, uh, I want to know how to do how? that. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to know how to do that. And he, he was he was, uh, he, he, he was tough on me, man. He said, look, you know, everybody says they want to know how to do that, but they're not serious. Right. Um, and uh, he, he was very clear that when you learn a skill, that could potentially, you know, we were in the lobby just earlier today, um, and, and I, you know, I made seven thousand dollars in the lobby on a trade uh, earlier today while we were just while we just you waiting. Made here. seven thousand on a trade. Yes. Okay. And 
it's because I have true? learned. This camera guy is here. He looked at you. Yeah. That looked like a train nod. <laughs> okay, all right, go nah, ahead. Nah, so, 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 and that, that we were just hanging, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And to actually understand how to be able to do that in a short amount of time, you think about that on an hourly wage perspective. In what other, uh, what other career or profession do you make seven thousand dollars in thirty minutes or an hour, right? Uh, and usually those are, you know, highly skilled professions. We're talking about doctors, lawyers, neuroscientists. But when you look at just billionaires in general uh, that are self-made, folks that came up and started with, you know, meager amounts of money. Nine times out of ten, if you look at their stories, it's because they learn how to navigate the financial markets. Um, a great story from uh, uh, a Harvard alum, a guy by the name of Ken Griffin. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you look him up on Wikipedia, he just was uh, uh, recognized for giving one of the largest donations yeah. back right. to Harvard. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. And so if you go to the Wikipedia and look him up, you'll realize that when he was 17, 18 years old, he was trading complex financial derivatives. Mm-hmm as an undergrad at Harvard. And not only was he trading them, back then he actually went to the school and made a special request to install a DISH satellite so he could get real-time stock quotes. And so when I think about that, when I think about how early he was doing that, he's you know obviously a multi-billionaire today, uh, it's about actually developing that skill. And, and too often I've realized, especially in our community, and then if you take it a step further, folks in the music business, they never got that education. They yeah. never got that information. So uh, for him, it's also not about actually starting with a lot of money. So he knew what to do, but he didn't have any money. So the first money that he used to invest, he got from his dentist and his grandmother, right? And so, you know, put together a couple, you know, a couple thousand or wow. really like a hundred thousand got from his dentist and his grandmother, his right? His dentist. Yeah, his dentist, right? And so it's about just understanding and knowing what to do. And, um, you know, it's not complex. It's really, it requires like middle school math, you know? And I feel like if it only requires middle school math, how come they're not teaching us this at that age and stage of our lives? Okay. How how do you, um, in terms of investing, Mm -hmm. we're talking stock market here, right? Yes. Okay. Financial markets. You like sure. financial markets, yeah. right? Um, There's something that I dabble in, have mm-hmm. for decades. Yes. You know, I just told a f- story about a friend of mine who worked at Charles Schwab's for mm-hmm. about 25 years. He yeah. uh, was uh, one of the people who first introduced me to open up a Charles Schwab account and mm-hmm. creating my um, my portfolio and all and all those things. So I know how I got into it. Yeah. But a lot of us in our in our community, I was apprehensive about putting money in the stock market because I felt like I'm I might as well go to Vegas. Yeah. You know, shoot some craps a little bit, right. play the cards, you know, right. play the numbers. Right. right. How do you explain to folks the the pros and the cons? You well, know? there's definitely a 100 percent difference okay. between investing and trading. OK. okay. Right. Okay. So trading what we did this morning, that's a that's an acquired skill. That's okay. something you develop over time. And, you know, 95 percent of traders, they lose money on an annual basis. Ninety five percent of traders Maybe lose more. money. Yes. Mm-hmm. Maybe more. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the taxes are different. Yeah. Taxes are different. Yep. Taxes, okay. income, et cetera. Now, when you're a long term investor, a Warren Buffett type, then you when you actually think about the odds of losing, mm-hmm. right? Let's take, for example, one of the most reliable investments of the past few decades is the S&P 500, Mm -hmm. the 500 biggest companies in America. And you can own them. You can literally for probably about, you know, 200, probably roughly uh, around $400 per share. Mm -hmm. You can put in $400 and actually own the 500, a piece of the 500 largest companies in America. Mm -hmm. The beauty of that, though, is that it is an index, meaning that if a company is no longer worthy of being in that index, it will automatically rebalance and readjust. So you don't have to worry about it at all. But the best piece about the S&P 500 is that if you've done any back testing and you hold this for 20 years, you have a zero percent chance of losing money. It's never happened. In the history, so we talk about Great Depression, dot com crash, mm-hmm. subprime mortgage crisis, mm-hmm. you know, COVID. Doesn't matter if you hold for twenty years, you have a zero percent chance of losing money. So that automatically should dissuade any fears you have okay. about investing, because that's what investing is. It's about 
owning productive assets that are going to beat inflation. Now, we've been talking a lot about inflation just in general. You f- you you feel it at the gas pump. You yeah. feel it when you're, you know, buying milk or groceries, groceries or eggs. Yeah. Somebody was yeah. telling me the other day, I'm not buying eggs no more. They're too expensive. I mean, you, you, you're, you're adjusting your spending habits. But really, when you have productive assets, right? And, you know, I got folks that are in my wealth plan that, um, you know, they think about the things that they they believe the future is going to look like. What is the future going to look like? And they want to be owners of that future. So if they believe that the future is going to be electric vehicles, they're owners of Tesla. Folks that were owners of Tesla at the beginning of the year. Yeah. If, let's say you started with my mentorship program at the beginning of the year. You've more than doubled your investment. So if you came at the beginning of the year, 100K, you're at a, at $210,000 mm-hmm. right now, um, which is a... a an incredible sort of byproduct of understanding how to navigate financial markets. But I I totally agree with you, especially even for my family um, being of Caribbean descent. Yeah. Right. They just said, look, you know, this is, this is completely, you know, this is 100%, you know, gambling. That's how they felt. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times it's because people don't understand that the beauty of investing is the partnership of a productive asset and patience. So mm-hmm. you got to have that patience so so that, that, that you're not it is you know, trying to buy Long and game. sell. Long right. game. Mm-hmm. Not trying to buy and sell. Okay. you you. I want to talk about your wealth plan in particular. All okay. right. All right. And then uh, also, we, we have not gone through this wealth plan, citizens. So it may work for people that are, have already tried it or signed up mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. with Ryan. Mm-hmm. I don't know those people. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, it's your opportunity to call him up and ask him for yeah, yourself. For sure. What this wealth plan is all about. But mm-hmm. I know this man intent is to make you all some good money. Yes. All right. So, 888 742 3345. Ryan Leslie is here. Sway the morning shade for fire. Ryan Leslie is here. Damn. He's talking about a couple of things. He got a new wealth plan he wants to share with you as well. He'll be doing a concert July 8th, right? Yes, sir. Talk about that, man. It's a. Open air and album release part? What is this? Yeah. What is this, yeah, man? You know, uh, I figured we play the album before we drop it. So we're going to play it live. Uh, and I've, I've had a big following for the longest time in, in Germany. So uh, we're doing a you know open air festival type confer- uh, concert, actually. Uh, so it's going to be about 3,000 folks. Uh, but folks are really flying in from all over the world. It's, it's, it's going to be uh, it's going to be great. It's Higher. been a minute. It's been a minute. Hell you, you, yeah. But you have a great of fan base overseas yes sir that you've cultured and cultivated over the years um has that been the secret to you think your longevity as an artist because you don't have to be in the forefront in the united states to be successful right right well i wouldn't necessarily say i'm in the forefront anywhere Mm -hmm. uh but what i would say is that i do have a direct relationship with the with the supporters that i have and that's been something that i've been cultivating we built an entire technology company and platform venture backed around that concept that the oldest social handle that we have as human beings is our cell phone number. Right? Mm-hmm. So talking about Harvard, I have colleagues from Harvard that still have their 617 area code because that, that cell phone number became a part of their identity. Mm-hmm. And so in 2013, I started giving my cell phone number out on Twitter, you know, 646-887-6978. Yeah. And, you know, to this point, it wasn't like I got millions of people, right? Because I had only sold a couple hundred thousand albums in total. But the 130,000 people that I have in that phone, they have been responsible for millions and millions of dollars of revenue because you have the ability based on understanding the desires and uh, the, the, the preferences of that audience to tailor experiences and products for them. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, at first, it was like, oh, twelve dollar album, digital, right? And then it was, oh, pay what you want. So some people paid, you know, fifty dollars. Some people paid a hundred dollars. Then it was, hey, let's do a concert, sixty five dollars a ticket. Then it was, hey, let's do a New Year's party, it's two thousand dollars a ticket. And then uh, at some point, we introduced crypto into the mix. So it was like, hey, you could buy my hoodie for fifty dollars, but you know, if you pay in Bitcoin, you get a little di- uh, discount. But we've seen. If we go back and look at the the data, because we're very data driven at, at the organization, we look look at the data. Those fifty dollar hoodies in twenty thirteen, they 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 have, you know, uh, they're worth like two thousand dollars based on the payment type, mm-hmm. the payment source, mm-hmm. the, cur- the currency type. A two thousand um, dollar, a two thousand dollar 
ticket to the New Year's Eve party is worth a hundred thousand, right? Mm-hmm. And so we we basically banked all of that so that we could actually see how the introduction of new currency types, the introduction of blockchain, the introduction of direct to consumer, which really wasn't necessarily prevalent in the music business. Now it's of everybody's talking about it. You yeah. see folks coming out, oh, we independent and masters, mm-hmm. you know, we et cetera, et cetera. But at that point, you know, it's almost the innovator's dilemma. When you're the first one doing it, you're very under the radar, but you understand that you're really weaving a fabric, a a floor, a an infrastructure that anyone who follows behind you can actually, you know, use as a launching pad and a runway. And you were the first one doing it. Yeah. It's something to be said about being I wouldn't say I was the, the first, first one. I, I okay. was early. But you I mean early. Prince was doing this with the oh, yeah, Prince. Yeah. yeah, he tried to you know, but but the social media, the media, the mm-hmm. web, there wasn't enough adoption. So there have to be so many Let's call it uh, elements which which play together perfectly to deliver the outcomes that 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 uh, that we've been seeing now. Okay, Ryan Lasley. When last time you've been broke? Last time. When I've did, been when did broke. you hit bottom? <laughs> last time you hit bottom. Man, uh, right after college, man. Right, right after, after college. college okay. Right after college. Uh, you know, and it was crazy too because I hit the rock bottom. After my boy got signed, so my boy uh, Corey Latif Williams, he mm-hmm. he had gotten signed uh, with Hawk Islam mm-hmm. uh, and Keith Massenburg. We went to Chicago recording studio. We did the album, and then there was, as usual, there were delays in the release of the album. And you know, I got paid as a producer, maybe ten thousand a track. That was the most money I'd ever seen from music. Maybe you know, somewhere between four and seven tracks. And I thought it was great, and then I realized, man, that's no money. And I ended up basically homeless in a, you know, in a garage behind a barber shop in Randolph, Massachusetts, man. In and, a go- uh, what? In a garage, used Damn. to be homeless behind a barber shop, like that's- literally, you know, walking across the street to eat, you know, shoplifting crackers. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. A Harvard grad. <laughs> And you know, at yeah, yeah, so he yeah, was yeah. still in, <laughs> you were still in crackers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, Ryan you know, Leslie was a thief. <laughs> yeah, straight up, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, ended up on my father's couch. And uh, my dad, you know, basically said, "Wow, you know, we worked our whole lives to get you into an Ivy League school, uh-huh. so you would be straight." And you know, they also worked their whole lives as Salvation Army officers, which yeah. meant that they sacrificed you know, financial gain here for what we would call treasures in heaven uh-huh. by actually, you know, serving other people. So they've really looked at me as, hey, when we get to that age, we sent you to Harvard so you could take care of us. And obviously I'm able to do that now, but at that time my father was getting a little <laughs> apprehensive. <laughs> um, but he made a deal with me. Um, he said, look, Rye, you know, if, if we're not going to believe in you, who is? What is it that you need? And I said, look, I need, you know, this keyboard. I did need this computer. I need this software. And he maxed out a credit card that he got in the mail, and he made a deal with me. He said, look, I'm going to max out this credit card, and you got to make me a deal that, uh, you know, uh, you pay me back double within five years, but there's an insurance plan for that five years. You have a year to try to figure out how you're going to make it in music, and if you don't, then you got to apply to law school, and law school is three years. So when you get out of law school, you should, after you actually are gainfully employed, you should be able to give me back double. Uh, Fortunately for me, in any great story, serendipity plays a piece. Mm-hmm. And the late, great Ed Woods actually called me Ed up uh, maybe about four months after I got all my equipment. And he said, yo, man, I got an internship for you in New York City. It's, it's unpaid. It's 30 days. But, you know, come on out here and let's see what you could do. And, man, um, that was 2003. The rest was history. The rest man. is history, yeah. man. Brian Leslie. So I wanted people to hear your story so they know where it's coming from. For sure. Um, Leslie has a comment in North Carolina. Go ahead, Leslie. What up? Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Um, first off, uh, shout out to all y'all, but I know I got to make it quick. Ryan Leslie is a genius. Um, musically, the song Gibberish, which is literally just what it sounds like, I still listen to that song. It's probably 15, 20 years old. Anybody that can make a song with no words that hot, like, I <laughs> listen intently to everything he says. Um, but I just wanted to let y'all know that there is a movement of black investors mm-hmm. that are making a point to teach other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to go to Invest Fest for the first time this year, which is in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Um, hosted by... Earn Your Leisure. I forget, Earn Your Leisure? Mm-hmm. Yes. And then um, my homeboy from high school, he actually owns a company called Red Panda. 
that teaches people how to do investing, Mm -hmm. um, stock investing. Mm -hmm. And um, there's also Wall Street Trapper. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that are trying to put people on game. We've -hmm. we've got a big disadvantage, but people are definitely um, investing in themselves and then turning that around and paying it forward. For sure. Absolutely. Sure. We have Wall Street Trapper up here. Did an excellent job, too, man. Salute mm-hmm. to that brother. I've been in contact yes, with him every week mm-hmm. uh, since he first. Really? Yeah, since he came on our show, I mm-hmm. talk to him every week. Mm-hmm. Oh, we contact each and other. I think it's important. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. But it's just important, like, the, even his name. I, I'm assuming he was intentional with that because we don't think that we can do it. We know it can be done. But Wall Street Trapper tells you, like, y'all, y'all can do this, too. If you can... You can stay out of jail making money in the hood, then you can absolutely use that same brain and do it legally. Mm-hmm. And though these guys are teaching us that. I don't have middle school math skills, sadly, but um, I'm cheering for everybody. There yeah. you go. You could gain them. You yeah. could, you know, that ain't nothing. This you know. ain't a ceiling. Hey, yeah. what, hey, hey, Leslie, what's 12 plus 13? See, um... Like it's really bad. I think it's twenty five, right? You, you got that right. You knew what it was. Yeah, okay. You got that on the point. Okay, okay. I you got to think it. Really hard. That's all right. Yeah, I love well, you got you got to the right answer. It lasted ten seconds. Yeah, time is a figment of your imagination. <laughs> Get to it, Leslie. All right, you a citizen, Leslie. Sway in the morning. And Leslie, I know why you call because his first name is Ryan, Ryan. and then your name. Ah, twins. Right, <laughs> citizens. I feel like we had to talk one day. So thank you guys all for all y'all do and this, putting this information out there is so important. Thank yeah, you, I Leslie. Y'all. All right, and let hey, Ryan any information you want her so she could be. A, how can she find out more about your wealth plan? Yeah, just. Uh, Shoot me a text, uh, and if you, it's hard to remember the phone number. Just go to textryan.com in your browser, and you could just drop your number, and uh, we can get a conversation started from there. Mm-hmm. But I think really for for what what I do is uh, is way different from what anyone else does because the way that I learned was one on one. So I don't have online courses and watch this, and you're on your own. We're basically building sort of like a very very exclusive lifetime wealth building club. And I personally mentor each person that comes through. So that means I have very limited bandwidth. Uh, it's also very expensive. Um, but at the at, at the end of the day, the returns are really what we focus on. So this isn't a, a situation where it's just like, hey, you pay for the education. For us, we actually have a commitment to the results. So, so it's you about pay actually. you pay to learn, right? That's right. Okay, so you pay a fee, mm-hmm. right? And does that fee go to an investment, or it's just no, 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 okay, no, no. So it's like for me when I when I work with my mentor, he told me, Ryan, listen, if you're really dead serious, go get yourself a campus job, commit to a year, and come back with two hundred and fifty dollars a week for my time. For mm-hmm. my time, mm-hmm. okay? For my expertise, my experience, and the energy that it will take to transfer my knowledge to you. And to say that, you know, it's made a multi million dollar difference in my returns would be an understatement. Yeah. Right? Because it just compounds over time. So you're not going to tell us exactly what it is you tell people when you do that one on one consultation right now? Well, I mean, it would take too long. Okay. You know, it's, it's okay. really, it's a year. It's for people that really are dead serious. Like, look, I want to actually, like, the craziest piece about this is that the greatest investors in the world are, they are measured by their returns and also by their assets under management. Yeah. Okay. So, so when you think about your profits that you're going to make, your profit is based on your principal, okay? If everybody in an investment makes 10%, then the person that only put $10 in is only going to make $1. Mm-hmm. The person that puts $1 million in is going to make $100,000, yeah. okay? So the bottom line is that um, when, you're, when you have a small amount of money, you actually have a structural advantage in the financial markets because... Uh, you know, Warren Buffett is famous for saying this. He said, if I was running a million dollars or 10 million for that matter, I could get you 50% per year. Okay. So that means any of my folks that are out there that have a portfolio that's sub 10 million, that means that we can work together and we can find the techniques and strategies that can potentially, there's no guarantees, Mm -hmm. but can potentially deliver you a 50% compounded return, 30 to 50%. And I got folks that are in my community that have done this. And Mm -hmm. so it's not just about working with me, it's also about finding camaraderie, finding community, and a community that has care, concern, and consideration for your success in this journey. Because it's not gonna be, you know, that's why traders lose money. It's not a one day, one month, one year journey. 
to get to hundreds of billions of dollars, really Warren Buffett really saw his wealth take off in 60s and 70s. But why? Because the principal capital was higher. Mm -hmm. So the longer you have to like build up that principal capital from 5,000 to add in a zero to 50,000, add in a zero to 500,000, even if you're just consistently getting that 10%, the ten percent on the five thousand might only be five hundred, mm-hmm. but that ten percent, when oh, no. you understand and learn how to do it consistently, nobody who's here at this table or, or, or in this room wants to say, "Hey, look, you know, in ten years from now, I want to have less than what I have today." Mm-hmm. So, if you're able to diligently earn an income and save, it's about understanding what to do to just get those incremental percentages. Because mm-hmm. the larger your principal in safe investments, mm-hmm. the larger your profit will be because the percentage is just something you learn how to build consistently and so that's what we do ryan leslie all right mm-hmm. you know, last question tracy this is great ryan i'm so glad that you came going off of um our caller leslie when she had mentioned this kind of explosion of financial educators and mm-hmm. gurus what have you which i think is awesome and then the i would say fine prints is that there are some who either on their platform have had a guest that maybe they didn't realize or maybe they did mm-hmm. but a lot of folks claim that they've been scammed by or mm-hmm. manipulated taken advantage etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. um for you what would you say to those who are very like skeptical about financial educators right now? Mm-hmm. And also too, like when it comes to vetting the folks that you work with, can you tell us a bit of that process? Yeah. So for me, uh, I'm, I am the arbiter of all information that is distributed because I, I, I want to stand behind whatever I'm teaching, right? And also, we're very, very transparent. So people want to look at my returns, they can see my returns. They want to look at broker statements, they can see broker statements. They want to see actual trades that were taken. If they're short-term, it's all posted, it's clear, screenshotted. And it's not just screenshots that can be manipulated. It's mm-hmm. actually, hey, let's go to a screenshot, let's log in live, and let's see what's actually happening. Because a lot of times, you're absolutely right, there's folks that, especially during... Uh, 2020 and 2021, everybody was a genius because the stock yep. market was just going up. So they 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 have the actual returns as well, right? Uh, but the difference, I believe, is just in uh, sort of the personal, uh, sort of the personal responsibility that I have, right? In most programs, there's just going to be a disclaimer that hey, you know what you're getting into, and if you lose money, then that's on you. For me, uh, we will work with our mentees for them to understand how to actually not lose money once again i keep going back to warren buffett but he always says the number one rule of investing don't lose money number two rule refer to rule number one right Mm -hmm. so it's always for us it's about preservation of the portfolio the number one the paramount priority is preservation of your principal capital as opposed to too much emphasis on profits when you see folks peddling emphasis on profits yeah you you have to really you know pause mostly because like we said the statistics show if you're going to trade short term there is a 99 percent chance that when you file your tax return at the end of the year right. you will be filing a capital loss on those short-term trades and so it's it's important that that you work with someone and i i have very limited bandwidth right so I, you know I, I some people might say hey ryan it's unfair for you to come out you know on a show and say oh yeah i got a wealth plan but the reason why my bandwidth is so limited is because i literally want to actually work directly with people that whatever they come to the program with, we're going to add a zero. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a 10x. And it takes time to do that. And so, it, you know, for me, I've, I've been very blessed that I will probably never need to ever work again in my life. Um, and when I look at the examples of folks that have given back in this way, I think, you know, a lot of people gave Warren Buffett a lot of flack because they said, look, you're not contributing enough. You're not. Why don't why don't you actually you know, why don't you uh, donate more? And he said, well, my donation is actually that I'm great at growing this money. So the longer I grow this money, the more I'll actually be able to donate. So once he got to a point where it was hundreds of billions of dollars, he said, well, look, you know, it would take me the rest of my life to even spend 1% of this, so I'm giving 99% away, and he pledged it away. And so I want our people to be able to get to that point. Sometimes we out here trying to just figure out where our next dollar's gonna yeah. come from. Yeah. And so when we can put ourselves in that right mindset, because for me, mindset and mentality beats 
math and mechanics when it comes to money in the markets. Mm. If we can get the right mindset and mentality, and that's really what I work with my folks on in the mentorship, and it's one-on-one, uh, that's how I feel we can make a real difference. And it starts with that first person in the family. And then that person in the family, that's how you start building the trust in the actual systems and processes. Because nobody likes the way he said, he said, I don't know nobody in this wealth plan. I, I don't know anybody in it. But when it's actually, hey, that's my son, that's my daughter, that's my uncle, that's my mom, that's my grandmother, they're applying these principles and we're looking at how they're able to live differently because they have a different mindset when it comes to money. It's an abundance mindset. That's the kind of difference I want to make, and I know that that can be generational, and it man. can only be done one-on-one, -on -one, and that's how we do our program. Give it up yeah. for Ryan Lasley, man. Good I love job. you, brother. Thank Appreciate you for coming here no, and educating us, man. Lasley. Absolutely. Once again, citizens, if you want to reach Ryan, how can they reach you and find out Text more about Ryan it? .com. Simple. Just go to the URL, leave your number. Let's, let, let's, let's, let's talk about it. TextRyan.com. Thank you. Um, and then you can also f find him on social, but don't even bother with that. <laughs> Text Ryan dot com